Evening everybody. Alright. I have a problem with a uh, three button mouse uh, from uh, an Acorn machine. Bought this off eBay and uh, replaced the battery in it. Unfortunately, it hadn't leaked that much. And please focus. That's better. Well done. Uh, yeah, so this all works fine. Uh, got rid of the supervisor mode that it tends to pop up with once the battery's gone flat. But, and basically it's been 20 odd years since I've ever used one of these. Used them at school uh, a very, very long time ago. And, yep, so got it all up and running, but unfortunately couldn't actually get the mouse to work. Um, now, these have uh, an internal fuse, I think it's a 2 amp fuse, and I think it does the mouse and the keyboard. Um, so it was unlikely to be that. I've taken it apart anyway uh, and checked it and the fuse is absolutely fine for there. But the issue is, is that the middle uh, mouse button works for fine, but you move it around and you just get a slight jiggle on the screen of the cursor and the cursor won't move properly. Um, so and I've checked the cabling, I've checked for continuity from uh, the onboard connector uh, on here, uh, to the back of here as much as I could do. Um, I've also checked using the oscilloscope. Now, the interesting thing with the oscilloscope is I was only getting um, the pulses in one direction, on one axis, when I was moving the mouse. I wasn't getting it on the other, which kind of implies that there's something's gone wrong with the actual mouse. Uh, hopefully it's the mouse and not the computer. So obviously there's a line being held down low. So something's gone wrong uh, internally in here at some point. So I'm going to whip this apart and see if we can find out what the issue is. So we're in, you can see that, yes. Nope, don't want continuity mode, just want... So my first line of thought is check the simple stuff. So I'm just going to go and check the uh, SMD resistors. Uh, there's a few on here. Splattered around. Got a ceramic cap as well. Uh, some other type of discrete thing there. God knows, transistor of some sort. Writing so small, I can't actually see what it says. But anyway, so this one should be a it's four yeah four seventy. That was right. so that was resistor R six. R seven should be the same roughly. Yeah, that'll do. R eight should be the same again. Yep, four seven six. That one, oh, actually, that's a that's a jumper. That is, that's all zeros. That means mean that one's a jumper as well. So that'll be zero. Yep. So that is the M1 and M2. So there's zero ohm resistors. So that's fine. Uh, same thing. We've got an M4 here, so that's going to be yep. Fine. Leave the cap for the moment. R3 should be. As far as I can tell, 5.6k, so we yeah, have 5.5, that's fine. R5 should be the same again. 5. Point, yeah, 5.5. R4 should be the same again, 5.5. That should be a 0 ohm resistor, that's fine. R1 is 0 ohm, and it shouldn't be. That should be 27 ohms. Shouldn't be zero ohms. Let's put this into a slightly different range. I'm not using the auto ranging on this because it's a little bit messed up. So I'll just put that into ohms. No, something's wrong with R1, I think. Right, R9. So 
overloaded. R9 should be 3.3. Okay, yeah, that's fine as well. And I've checked the rest. So, R1 on here for some very, very, very odd reason. Yep, is shorted. And I don't think it should do. So, I'm just going to whip that off now. I'm going to test it out of circuit just in case it's not that and it's actually something else. Um, and we'll see what's what. Okay. Our one is out. And it's still on the bench, which is good, and it hasn't fallen on the floor. So. Ooh, little git. Right, let's get the probe on this. Yeah, that's still zero ohms, so that is shorted. So that's a pile of crap. Uh, okay, time to try and go and find something to replace that with. I'm going to have to hunt around. Back in a sec. Right. I didn't have a 27 ohm resistor, but I've got a 22 ohm. And in my book, that's damn close enough. Uh, if it's not, we'll soon find out. Uh, now I've just realised I've got a bit of an issue here. Because this board sits very, very flush with the base of this casing. If you can see that there. In fact, even the uh, the encoder wheels only protrude out a little bit, and there's already little cutouts in here, which means we've got no room to play around with in here. And I have no SMD resistors at all that small of that value to go in there. So I'm going to have to be a little bit inventive with this. Uh, Okay, so see where else we can tag this on. So we've got the top half there. No. no. Right, we've got one point there, and that other point goes straight to that um, transistor there. So we've got one point which is on the other side of the circuit board that we can play around with, which goes to a diode D2. So, I think let's bend this around a bit. Probably can't see what I'm doing, but there's a. I'm gonna take that out. There's a small through hole here, and I'm gonna see if I can sneak. Oh, I think that'll work. Yes, it will work. It's not exactly beautiful. Admittedly, I kind of bent it roughly into place. So, I'm going to put a little bit of flux on here. Got some... Uh, Beautiful Amtec flux, great stuff. I never know if you're going to get plungers with these at all. To be honest with you, are you going to get plungers? Do you get generic plungers with these? I realise you can't actually see what I'm showing you. So I've got another one as well with a solder mask on it, which is exactly the same design as this. And there's no plunger, I don't. Anyway, enough waffling. So, try and solder this and not breathe in the flux fumes. That is not beautiful, but it's functional. And it's a clean joint, more importantly. Okay. Let's bend this over. I actually still can't see what I'm doing. 
Okay, so this is actually going to the original position, one of the original positions that the SMD resistor was on. So if you can see that, probably not. Come on, you can focus. There we go, that's amazing. So yes, yeah, so the one that is going through goes to this side of the pad. That other side is where the other, where it jumps to there, to, to the diode D2. So, I'm going to try and solder that in place. Very small amount of flux. Because I'm a bit cheap and that flux is quite expensive and you don't really need that much because it's not exactly a dirty area to begin with. Actually, I think that's a bit, a little bit protruded. So I'm just going to hold it down with the tweezers. There we are. And that is an awful joint. Try again. That is a beautiful joint now. Excellent. Just realised once again, it hasn't been focusing, but you get the general gist. So, just to recap. Now then, I've snuck it through that hole there. One leg goes to the uh, uh, furthest, closest to the edge pad, because uh, there's nowhere else I could pinch it from on the top side. And yes, I have pulled that then through, and it's now soldered to that side of D2. So now, before I'm going to put everything back together, I'm going to see if it's made any difference or whether I do actually have to go and search for a 27 ohm resistor, um, which I'm hoping that I wouldn't have to do. But then again, that might not be what the issue was, and that resistor that shorted might have shorted for a completely different reason, so this is a bit of a gamble as it is. Right. So it's going to go plug the end in, the end of the mouse I mean, <laughs> nothing else. Okay. Power on. That's always a good sign. Hasn't gone up in a big ball of smoke. Now then. Oh, I saw a little bit of twitching of the mouse cursor then. So, God, trying to get both these in shots is impossible. Come yeah, on, stop flickering. Right, let's just go grab a... Oh, yes. So I can get my finger in there, that works. Um, oh, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. So I can't exactly get my fingers right in there at the moment. But whoo, a mouse has been saved. Oh, oh, God, flickering. Oh, that's awesome. Right, give us a moment, I'm gonna put it all back together. Everything's been screwed back together now. So, all right, I didn't video that bit because, Christ, it's just a couple of screws. How boring is that? Let's flick it on. So we've actually got the ball in there as well, so that'll make things a lot easier than me trying to balance 25 billion things in my hand all at once. Flicker, 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 flicker. Ooh, flickers. Right. Ah. Oh. 
Look, a mouse that works properly. Oh, I can click on things and everything. Oh. Mouse, how I've missed you. God, I've actually forgotten how to use his OS. It has been about 25, 24 years, no, 25 years since I've touched this. Nice. Anyway, so hopefully that sh should help some of you if you've had if you had one of these uh, original acorn mice. I think this is an original one. Come on, focus. There we go. Uh, yeah, it was a Logitech uh, MNM-PH15. I'm sure that's uh, an original acorn mouse. Uh, it's not the one I was remember when I was little that had the three kind of separate postage stamp buttons on the top which I kind of prefer I don't know if they're actually any good as a mouse but yeah so if that helps somebody out into repairing these then that's great because I'm all for saving uh, vintage equipment because I think know these are getting more and more difficult to get hold of as time goes on uh, you can do a few conversions as far as I'm aware with some uh, optical mouse that use the quadrant chip uh, chips but you know that's probably out of bounds for the average user who just wants to have their bit of a retro hit and just wants to use a, an old mouse. Uh, yeah, so if it saves a few of these, then great. Right, cheers, bye.